Today, the Democrats engaged in a bit of theater in a desperate effort to keep the Russian collusion drama going. Jerry Nadler's Judiciary Committee, along party lines, voted to subpoena the entire unredacted Mueller report and all supporting evidence from the Department of Justice. If the department still refuses, then it should be up to a judge, not the president and not his political appointee, to decide whether or not it is appropriate for the committee to review the complete record. Now, understand this. With this move, Nadler is at, oh, the committee, the, but again, party line vote, is actually committing a fraud. Uh, it's a fraud if ultimately filed at the Justice Department on the Justice Department. And just the discussion of it, it's a fraud on the American people. Any judge considering this should sanction any lawyer who signs his name on this request for a subpoena, given that the law prohibits Attorney General Barr from releasing underlying materials without a careful review for any grand jury information that would be prohibited by law to release. The Attorney General's entire mandate is to enforce the law, and he's expressly forbidden from providing grand jury outside the department in a very limited and narrow exceptions. Congress is not one of the exceptions, and the chairman knows it. Well, this isn't serious. Come on. It's, it's all just a dumb show. Never mind that Mueller found no criminality in his two-year probe and that there is nothing in the report to justify impeachment, which is what the Democrats obviously wanted. Nadler and his crew are just trying to distract from their own embarrassment. And for the Democratic theory here to be correct, think about what has to be. Bill Barr, an internationally respected legal mind and former Bush attorney general, would have had to knowingly distort Mueller's fact-finding on both collusion and obstruction. And two, Mueller, Barr, and most everyone involved in this investigation would have to be in some way in cahoots, working to protect the president at all costs. Now, tonight we do have reports from the New York Times that there are anonymous investigators from the Mueller team who feel that Barr's summary was incomplete. Well, the report doesn't say who is upset in the New York Times or what they're really upset about. It's kind of murky. We'll wait and see if anything comes of that. But why would Mueller stand by without objection if Barr had skewed in his, his lengthy findings? It's a 400-page uh, report, right, in a four-page summary. Well, answer, Mueller wouldn't do that. Now, remember, it only took him hours to correct a false report from BuzzFeed earlier this year. And also remember, both Republicans and Democrats went to great pains to build Mueller up as a consummate pro, an upstanding citizen and legal mind. He chose Robert Mueller, who has so much integrity. There is literally no more respected person in American law enforcement than Bob Mueller. Judgment, character, integrity, humility. If you have a kid and you despair that there's not a hero in America, wake up bright-eyed and bushy-tailed, Robert Mueller's it. I think the republic just got a chance of saving itself. Okay, so now we're to believe that this sainted figure, Mueller, has become either muzzled or in some way manipulated? Fat chance. Even now, Bill Barr is working to redact the Mueller report in accordance with the law in order to release it as promised probably by uh, mid-April here. So why are the Democrats in such a rush? Well, what's going on here? Because they are so invested in this grand tinfoil hat conspiracy that they've forgotten how to govern. And they've forgotten how to judge issues such as this, very important, dispassionately. Hatred for Trump, it's their animating principle. And they must constantly feed their media and political beasts, beasts who have been sharpening their teeth to devour Trump since the night he won the presidency. And I think in this twisted world of resistance, it doesn't matter if the case against Trump evaporated. They'll just create another one. They're addicted to hating Trump. Recall how high with anticipation they've been. We're seeing that the collusion piece of this, piece by piece, starting to be built out. That's going to be, you know, an, a political hurricane is out there at sea for him. We'll call it Hurricane Vladimir, if you will. Though. The walls are closing in. He seems cornered and he's lashing out. We are finally at a tipping point. The walls are closing in on President Trump. Uh, they're closing in all right, but not on Trump. So now the media and some of the other resistance types will do anything to avoid kicking their hate Trump habit. No mea culpa's here. 
Democrat media and co-conspirators are seeing their ratings collapse. But they reject the idea that an intervention is in any way necessary. They're on a path of self-destruction. Collusion is a behavior. And there could be ample proof of that kind of behavior in Mueller's full findings. This could set up a political battle with this perception that President Trump is trying to shield certain information from the public. It feels like the seeds of a cover-up are here. The flames of conspiracy must be kept burning. The Get Trump gang requires new injections to reach the resistance euphoria that once felt so exhilarating. Now, just yesterday, CNN and MSNBC found a truly sensational new morsel for their audiences. You're not just saying he cheats. You're saying he cheats. I mean, he <laughs> cheats on all of it. He cheats like a mafia accountant. Like, he, he cheats crazy. He tried to cheat Tiger Woods in a match. And they all came up to me and told me how they do it. They have four balls in the pocket, and they're instructed to throw it out of any bunker or out of the woods. Arnold Palmer would be rolling in his grave mm -hmm. about the big orange splotch he's putting on the game that I love. Golfgate. It is hilarious watching them flail, but then again, it, it really isn't. Because the idea that political and media partisans should have to work this hard to create an anti-Trump narrative, even as the facts escape them? It's sort of tragic, so what next? Hamburglar in chief, what the president's diet tells us about his presidency. Or Air Force One, what's under Trump's ball caps and why it should concern you. Tomorrow, my friends, activists from dozens of far left groups are themselves promising massive protests nationwide. Gotta keep it going, gotta keep it going. What's the purpose of the protests? Well, of course, anyone with a brain knows it's about collecting email addresses for 2020. That's what it's really about. But what they claim the protests tomorrow are going to be all about is that they want to pressure Bill Barr to immediately release the entire unredacted Mueller report and all the underlying witness interviews and so forth. Now, this is truly moronic. If Barr or any attorney general bowed to some organized protest and abandoned the classified information redaction process, he or she would risk serious legal jeopardy. But who cares? You know, concepts like the rule of law, they mean nothing to these people whose sole purpose in life is to resist Trump by any means necessary. So tomorrow, along with their release the report signs, the protest organizers should really be passing out tinfoil hats. But my question is, what happens when they run out of conspiracy theories? What then? Who knows? But until then, It'll be more sound and fury signifying nothing. And that's the angle.